I smoked DMT, and this is what happened. So today we've got a question from a viewer. Yo, Elliot, you're a spiritual man. What are your thoughts regarding psychedelics? So I'll tell you what my thoughts are on psychedelics in a moment, but first a story. So like I said, I've smoked DMT. It happened in 2014 where my brother and me went and visited a mentor of ours. I'm not gonna tell you his name, but we had a great day where we did art, we stacked rocks, we drank tea, we ate meals, and we smoked DMT. And uh, I could tell you my experience of that experience, right? Like what happened when I smoked DMT. So it was a nice day. We smoked some DMT in the backyard. I laid down, looked at the clouds, and started to cry. I laughed, but then I started to cry. Funny how laughing and crying almost go together. If you can't cry, you probably can't laugh. They're both <laughs> orgastic <laughs> convulsions in the body, right? Laughing and crying, if you really do a cry. So uh, I had some orgastic releases while I was on this DMT that I want to say lasted about 10 minutes. I laughed and then I cried and then I looked at my brother and he and I looked at each other and we laughed and we cried and spoke a little bit and then I don't think it was but 30 minutes and the high went off. And so a lot of people that use a psychedelic like that will have an experience like that, maybe more intense but similar, and think that God cracked their skull open and went inside their body and everything that's been holding them back from being their best was exploded out. Bwah! I cried and I've never felt the same. I know that feeling because my first convulsion like that was deep laughter when I did my first bioenergetic session in 2001 when I was humping the mattress and I was doing deep breathing and I broke into laughter like I never did before. I would never felt the same after that. That, th that high took a long time to wear off. It was outrageous. So. I thought the same thing about bioenergetics. This was, you know, back before psychedelics was like a cool Rogan bro thing. And I just happened to find a woman that taught active meditation and bioenergetics. I thought it sounded cool and I had a psychedelic experience. So I became an evangelist for bioenergetics. And a lot of you guys know me for that. Just like the many psychedelic crackheads who are evangelizing the need for taking this special weed or special drink or special concoction that's gonna put you into a state very similar to that which I experienced. So I get it, right? I'm an energetic crackhead where y'all are just like, you know, smoking, drinking, injecting crackheads. I hear they even put like injecting like frog poison into you and you start throwing up and you feel great about it. Bioenergetics will make you throw up also. So I guess that my assessment of it is unfair because I came in with a previous experience that I was able to compare it to. So I'm not as jazzed and jacked up or even curious about bioenergetics as most people are. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, as psychedelics as most people are. And it doesn't mean that I'm not open. I am. I might try it again one day. Who knows? Right? I have friends who uh, this is what they do in exotic places. And maybe I'll take them up on an offer one day. I don't know. But Bioenergetics is better than psychedelics. That's my opinion, right? Because with bioenergetics, look, it's tough. And you also need someone who can hold space and carry you on the journey if you're gonna do bioenergetics. The same way that if you're gonna do psychedelics, like you will do it in a safe space with someone who knows what they're doing and they'll carry you along the journey. Bioenergetics requires that. So that's a limitation for both. And that's things that you can do on your own. And even if you do them on your own, you need containment, you need support, right? So that's a limitation for both of them. They require a loving environment, a loving person and an elder to carry you through the process most resourcefully. Um, but besides that, a, a skilled bioenergetic practitioner don't need to go get exotic plants. That's like a, that's a limitation. Ooh, where do you get these special tree plants? These special leaves that I can drink or smoke or Snort, right? Like, 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 I have some friends that snort tobacco. Gives them like a quick psychedelic hit, right? 
So the, the, the problem with that also, as opposed to bioenergetics, right? <laughs> Giving yourself hits by breathing and shaking and expressing yourself. I don't need no powdered tobacco, bro. Where are you gonna get powdered tobacco? And then you need somebody to blow it up your nose. So this is some of the shit that psychedelic bros like to do. Let's wrap this up. Bioenergetics beats psychedelics. Do what you want. Probably easier for you to get psychedelics than meet someone who knows bioenergetics, except for me. If you wanna know more about bioenergetics, sign up for my grounding camp event updates, where we're gonna be doing a shit ton of bioenergetics. That link is down there. There's natural means by which you can achieve the things that you're looking for, and I'm proposing that, bioenergetics over psychedelics. That's it, that's all, I'm done.